Hello guys and welcome back to the That's Life channel with me, Ryan Glenman. It's been a while since I've uploaded on this channel, but we're back with another video and hopefully you enjoy it. Um, it's awful weather today currently in the UK, so hopefully your spirits are high and, like, um, and the weather isn't getting you down too much, um, especially when you live in the UK and anywhere else there is rain. Uh, today we're going to look at something uh, important and quite relevant for the time. Uh, we're going to look at the new Supreme, Supreme Court nominee uh, nominated proposed to be nominated by uh, President Trump and it's Amy Coney Barrett. Um, we'll look at her life and what she's done in the past, see how she could be influenced in the Supreme Court and what impact she can bring to um, rulings that could be happening after she gets appointed to the court itself. Uh, so first of all uh, let's look at where she is currently um, ruling as a judge and she's currently on the appeals court of the uh, 7th District Circuit which is in DC and it covers states such as Illinois, Indiana and Wisconsin. Um, her main sort of uh, ideology is was seen really in her uh, opposition to the Affordable Care Act which is Obama's Obamacare um, plan, it's all interlinked together and she's opposed that twice. She's also opposed this, the um, actual Supreme Court upholding tax subsidies in the Obamacare in 2015 so um, she has a very strong opposition to Obamacare and actually President Trump has hinted or has been hinting um, hint towards the president actually that actually when she becomes um, the new Supreme Court judge and she does this would be one of the first things that the Supreme Court will be ruling on whether to strike down Obamacare. Um, so a bit, bit more of back, background she's a Catholic a very strong Catholic and she has very strong Catholic views um, and it has been criticised that her Catholic background could clash with her judicial um, responsibility and her ability to be impartial and um, in that sense not being influenced by religion and being straight to the law and upholding the constitution and not what Catholic law actually proposes her to do. Um, degree wise and education wise she, um, she passed with a degree from the University of Notre Dame Law School uh, she was first in her 1997 class um, and she was named Distinguished Professor of the Year at Notre Dame afterwards for three times since 2002. Um, in, te in terms of her religious background, she's also part of the People of Praise group, which has two, around 2,000 members. Um, and then her actual writing background, her academic background, started really in the late 1990s with a 1998 paper called Catholic Judges in capital caps, uh, cases, where she argued that to to adhere to their church teachings on moral matters um, is important when you are being a judge and you're basically serving judicial review. Um, but also, it's important to uphold the law more than anything when those two things come into conflict. Um, in a 2013 uh, article she did for the Texas Law Review, she said that the public response to the controversial cases like Roe v. Wade in 1973, which upheld and made abortion legal, um, reflects public rejection of the proposition that stare decisis, uh, or decisis, basically the idea that um, we uphold precedent in law so that in a series of law can show that um, these precedents are upheld, and the, the way the basic traditional values and um, rulings from past courts can be therefore evident in new courts and the courts in the future. Um, she said that that can um, declare a permanent victor in a divisive, co divisive constitutional struggle um, was not really evident in the public's uh, support because they didn't want they didn't think that was possible um, and actually they didn't support that sort of view. Um, back to her religion, actually, she said if there is a ever a conflict between a judge's personal conviction and that judge's duty under the law, that is never either uh, never ever permissible for that judge to follow their personal convictions in the decision of the case rather than what the law requires. So here she is saying, actually, though she's a strong Catholic, if there's ever a conflict between her Catholic views and what the law requires her to rule on and rule about, she will always put the law first and the constitution first. Um, generally though, because of her conservative views, generally conservative views, um, and her past experience of being under the previous Supreme Court judge in one of the circuit cases and the circuit system, um, Scalia, her her views of conservatism have become more original, originalist, with basically the idea that actually what the founding fathers wrote in the constitution at the time when it was created, the meanings of those words and those definitions and the means of the uh, descriptions of how different powers and bodies should act, 
should be forthcoming in different societies despite any societal changes like civil rights enhancements and things like that. Um, so she's been heavily influenced by Scalia, who was originalist himself, uh, himself um, and she's also been able to sort of um, advocate for that same sort of originalist view and her conservatism is going to tip the balance definitely in the 6-3 majority towards a conservative side. Um, this next bit is about dissent, so she's basically a ruling of opposition if you, when you publicly um, show that you are displeased about um, well, a particular ruling. And she's made a few of these dissents recently, uh, well not recently, no, not in the time as a judicial um, advocator. She said that the Indiana law banning abortions, um, which are sought because of sex or disability of a fetus, were actually unconstitutional. So she went against that ruling, um, and she also and she also went against another ruling that said um, abortion had to be uh, consented from the parents, um, the young girl's under 18's parents, as well as a court. Um, before, if a girl under 18 wanted the right to abortion and she wanted to have abortion, she could get, she could get only the consent of the court and that could pass. However, this law, in, in um, this law actually said you needed the parental consent as well. So she joined uh, Barrett herself to join the dissent against that and said, actually, no, that is not right. That is unconstitutional. Um, next dissent of upholding federal of Wisconsin law banning felons from guns. So this law basically was a federal law and within Wisconsin state that um, banned felons, so convicted criminals, uh, from having guns. She joined the dissent of that. Um, and basically with all these, these dissents and this opposition, um, her conservative views have really come out against abortion in certain situations, um, against gay marriage, such, such as the Obergell Ob Bell versus Hodges case in 2015 same-sex marriage she's, um, against some of those ideas and I think those sort of conservative views will definitely tip the, the balance of the court in an ideological sense 6-3 and that will be a really strong uh, a really big stronghold for the conservatives and for President Trump who will be nominating Barrett based on her clear conservative views. Um, well in, in, in regards to her nomination she was actually considered to be Kennedy's replacement when he uh, when he left the Supreme Court um, and when that place became up for grabs. However, she did admit herself that she, was she had nowhere near as much experience uh, as, the, as Brett Kavanaugh, who actually got the nomination in place of Kennedy. Um, and so by accepting that, she's actually worked hard ever since to get those experiences in the DC circuit courts to be able to be in a place right now where she can be nominated to be the, the Supreme Court. Um, and impact the way that US law is put into practice uh, for many decades to come. Uh, with regards to the justices in the court already, in a 2015 radio interview, she did say that the Chief Justice Roberts, um, well, she said this, I think that the Chief Justice, when he was appointed, many thought he would be very, very conservative. Um, and I think he showed himself to be a much more of a moderate. So what she's saying here is the idea that Roberts, Chief Just Justice Roberts would come into the court and be very, very conservative in his views hasn't really been the case, and he's been ruling um, liberally on certain decisions such as Obergefell versus uh, Hodges, and upholding Obamacare in certain parts. So uh, actually, these very liberal decisions have actually shown he's not that much conservative. He's not as conservative as people thought he's going to be, um, and as she says here, he's much more than a moderate. So this could be a criticism of Roberts um, by Barrett, saying actually if uh, he was a very conservative, conservatively. A framed justice, people actually describe him as very conservative and he hasn't come across that way. Um, but this could be due to the society changing and the values changing and basically Justice Roberts having to change with those changes in the sense that his conservatism has to be within some kind of restraint and has to allow some kind of liberalism um, in the sense that if something needs to be happened um, legally and constitutionally within the law to allow progression of civil rights or progression of another group or basically the progression of the country to benefit the country, then that is what he should do. Um, but as I made a note here, he crit she criticised him in two Obamacare cases. So she's been a very strong advocate against Obamacare. And I think when she gets nominated um, by Trump, and if she gets through the nomination process and becomes the next Supreme Court Justice, um, 
President Trump has hinted that the first thing they'll try to do, the main priority of the Supreme Court then, would be to rule on Obamacare and hopefully strike it down in his view. Um, so she'll have a really, really, really important deciding factor to tip the majority, um, not just in that case, but in general cases where conservative and liberalism um, have been at odds really with, with each other. Right now it's 5-4 majority generally towards conservatism. 6-3 will really put that stronghold in the conservatives court and it will be uphill struggle really for the liberal judges to have a deciding impact on many, many cases. Um, so yeah, that's Amy Coney Barrett and her history and what she can bring to the, the, the Supreme Court um, and what impact that will have for many cases that they then go on to rule on. So yeah, thank you for watching guys. If you did enjoy the video, please leave a like down below, subscribe if you are new and uh, be, be aware of any new videos that I'll be putting up soon. Uh, but thank you for watching and have a good day.